Hello and welcome to the tech show. Today we discuss the new Shram Maven brakes. Some new shoes from Crank Brothers. Yep, and can you release that all new Spectral? All that and more to come in the news. So, SRAM have released the Maven brakes, and they say it's 50% more powerful than the codes, and it's the most powerful brake they have ever made. And uh, apparently, you can use 32% less effort to achieve the code power. Uh, I don't know how to work that out in my They brain, have a chart <laughs> online to tell you how much Newton meters your finger will use. So, no. these will use less of the Newton meters than the codes. Codes are really powerful. I know SRAM brakes get a mm. bit of a better app, but codes were really powerful. So yeah. these Mavens will be, yeah, impressively. More powerful yeah, exactly. There. I mean, look at the size of them. They are huge. They come with, I, I mean, I know this isn't SRAM, so, but no, just for comparison, good, good comparison of levers, they are absolutely huge. And so are the calipers too. So effectively, we've got more pad space. We've got more fluid, which is now Mineral fluid, yeah, not big, dot. Big change for SRAM. Yeah, so, why yeah. are we surprised about this, Owen? I think because for a long, long time SRAM have stuck to dot, so Department of Transport standard of, of brake fluid, because it's meant to have a much higher boiling point. Mm. That was always the argument against mineral. Um, but it would seem that these brakes are so powerful, and I think they've done a lot to manage that heat and how, how the heat transfer works. So that's why the calipers are so huge, or, mm -hmm. or one of the reasonings that SRAM is saying. Um, so yeah, they've been able to move to mineral, which even, even SRAM say is a little bit easier to live with because it's less likely to sort of, not ingest, but absorb moisture. It's a bit complicated. I'm <laughs> mashing it up a little bit, but. I definitely have to bleed SRAM dot or dot breaks a lot more than Mineral, uh, which is why they moved to mineral for their base models. But now this is the top, top, top spec, yeah. uh, and it's in mineral. Uh, but you do have to use their specific Maxima Mineral Brake Oil only, so it is performance based. Yeah, I mean okay. there are other performance brands of mineral oil out there. <laughs> Maxima do great, nice stuff. But yeah, it's an interesting one that they've said no, no, no just that one. Just that's, that one. That's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean I think they're incredible. They look brilliant. Mm -hmm. Bit of a bugbear about the fact that. Well, A, you'll need a new bleed kit, but if you get the fancy expert kit, yes. it's in a lovely display case, it's Full lovely. influencer package. Yeah, here. all bleed good link to Maven, yeah. influencer, like it. <laughs> um, it does come with another pad standard. Yes. Which is quite Massive. frustrating. Yeah, Massive it is, it's great big, standard. huge. Yeah. Huge, um, uh, which is where a lot of the um, power is coming from too. Um, I personally, I'm not sure, it, are we saying that more braking, more powerful is better because I'm not sure I can be trusted with an extra 50% power. Um, I obviously I did the brake rotor uh, test over on GMBN Tech, so I'll leave the link in the description uh, where I moved from 180s up to 200 rotors. That was an extra 11% um, just from the added surface yeah. area, and then you moved up to um, 220s. That was another 10% surface area, and that increment was like enough like by the time I got yeah, to 220 yeah. it was a little too much um, do we all need this I don't think we all need it <laughs> but I think if you if you're kind of a, uh, a more content person and you're you're kind of like more mass or gravity challenged I think a bigger brake is a really good idea um, I guess the advantage that that SRAM are saying is that you might be able to go down a rotor size so okay the brakes aren't designed for lightweight but going to a smaller rotor might help. The reasons why is, is all about heat management. So they, they want you to go to a smaller rotor to be able to get the brakes up to temperature because there's so much mass in terms of fluid mm -hmm. and aluminium around them. Mm -hmm. um, no. no, not for everyone, but if you're on kind of like a heavier, burlier bike and you're yeah. riding really steep terrain regularly, um, yeah, I think they could be really good. Obviously, they could be really good on e-bikes. Just to, now that we've actually got them, we speculated for ages on the prototype that we thought maybe it was moving from four piston to six piston. Yeah, more... I think we can, now it isn't that. It's four piston, but they are bigger pistons, uh, promising to deliver more power. You've got more surface area uh, covered with the bigger pads. Um, and you've also got these three, uh, sorry, four bolts, which kind of remind me the old Avid Code. But yeah, I think the extra the extra caliper size, and I think this humongous like joining section here, a for fluid transfer. Okay, I think it might be a bit of a bugger to set them up because you <laughs> haven't got the line of sight through there. But once that's oh, yeah. set up, they are yeah they're going to be really really oh, gritty. Some big windows there. 
Anyway, I think it's interesting. So they've got the bronze package, which forgoes a couple of features like the bite adjust. Um, and then you've got the silver and then you've got the ultimate, which is what we've got here. You don't have to have this showy uh, red anodizing. You can have just silver and black, uh, but the ultimates come with all of the gadgets and it comes in a big box with the um, bleed kits new, and a new couple of kit, pads because yeah. it takes sintered and resin as well and that special oil. Um, you are looking at uh, 220 euros per break for the bronze, um, but you have 699 euros for the full set. Uh, so guys, let us know what you think of the new Maven brakes. Um, and do you think more power is a good thing? Would you like more power? Would you like 50% more power or yeah? Just there, 50% yeah. more power, just there. <laughs> let us know in the comments below. New shoe time, very exciting. Crank Brothers Mallet Trail Boa. Um, so Crank Brothers shoes have been around for, well, a while now. They still feel new to me, but I feel like they've been around a while. And this is new and updated. Um, excitingly, we've got a Boa, we've got a Velcro. Um, <laughs> probably more interesting is a redesigned sole. So Crank Brothers spent a long time developing their, their sole before with lots of engineers from other grippy shoe companies. Um, but yeah, the new one has got the same kind of clever cleat slot and setup, pre-installed with a uh, Crank Brothers cleat, but shimmable to work with, with other brands as well. Um, but yeah, interesting, really rugged redesign to make it a lot grippier um, yeah, off they've the gone, bike. So that's really cool. a deeper tread and also this sort of multi-directional pattern, which yeah. is cleverly a Crank Brothers logo, uh, apparently helps with better grip. And they are seriously grippy. I mean, I can't even, we've been squeaking yeah, them around the table and knocking your tea over and all sorts, haven't we? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think this is the ultimate, this is more like a performance package, so you've got a more lightweight upper. Yeah, and, super light. Uh, quite sturdy, and then, you know, the old gravel cuff there. Yeah, I no, believe. really good. So, yeah, choice of shoe of EWR. Is it, is it e EDR, EDR World Champion? Oh, I always, sorry, Enduro. <laughs> Enduro. Uh, Jesse Melamed. I yeah. say his name wrong, sorry, Jesse. Melamed. Jesse. Uh, he's very, very quick, uh, and that's because he's in these shoes. Yeah, Might probably. be other things too, but yeah. <laughs> Interesting to see them. What what are your people's uh, their thoughts on the Crank Brothers shoes? I know they've been out there a while, so yeah, thoughts. Yep, and from Canyon, we've got an all new Spectral, which is really exciting. And if you haven't seen already over on GMBN, uh, the boys went off on a road trip on the brand new Spectral. All my days, Rich's model in that black and white looks absolutely just my. See, just I just love the lemon one that Blake really? had got. Yeah, the lemony one was great. The old love that alien one. blood one. Um, yeah, so it's now a 140 rear and a 150 up front, as it used to be 150 front and rear. We're looking at a slightly steeper seat angle of 76.5 degrees um, and a 64 degree head angle uh, remaining the same as the jump tree was pretty nice beforehand but just some small changes to the reach and stack and they're adding that KIS that keep it stable ah the um, uh, the spring loaded steering correction sort of device not yes. correction but it would Bring recentering. No, it's, it's not a damper. Even though I feel like a spring would have damping properties just by itself. <laughs> a little but it's bit. not a damper. Yeah, and that you can turn that off, but it is coming as standard with the Spectral now. Um, it fits a 600 mil bottle at the moment, but there is an 850 mil custom bottle coming your way. Multiple specs and colours available, including a coil, which looks pretty nice. Um, and I believe there is a flip chip to change the chain stays or to swap between 29 and 27.5, so it's looking pretty sweet. And it's got internal storage, which is super oh, cool. Oh, of course, Yeah, right. really nice to see. That is so, new on the spectrum. Yeah, that's kind of hidden nicely in the down tube, because you've got this, the, the Kiss Springer Thinger on the top tube. Springer which, Thinger. Yeah, you Technical. can trademark that if you like. Can you go for it? Um, but yeah, no, the storage is really big. We, we had them uh, in a workshop just before mm. they went out on the, on the road trip, and yeah, they're impressive. Nice. Looks like the Spectral's been down the gym. Bumped up a bit. <laughs> Hench 24, that's what they've done. It's clever. Um, also, we've got some yummy titanium bikes. Always I good know. to have more titanium. And this comes when um, Kotick actually said they're going to stop doing titanium oh. bikes from now on okay. uh, for environmental reasons or their own yeah. environmental reasons anyway. Yeah. But DMR have said, we're doing one. Which is, I mean, uh, yeah, Kinesis, who are in a sort of same family, if you like, as mm. DMR, have, have got... Uh, 
have had titanium frames for a while, oh, and they've yeah, been really, really well liked. So I can see why they would why, the, the, why they would do it. Um, so yeah, it's 29 a hardtail, uh, clearance for 2.5 mil tires, designed around a 140 fork, sensibly slack, 64.5 degree head angle, sensibly steep, mm. 76 degree seat angle. Um, only two reach options, so I guess yeah, only two, two sizes, real sizes yeah. really. But five year warranty on the frame set, at only 1800 quid. So actually, if you're looking for a Thai bike. It's Another not bad. The, list, the yeah. Trail Star has always been quite an affordable hard hit and hard tail. So it came about in 1996. I think I had one. Oh, wow. Uh, maybe not as early as 96 because I wasn't riding that early. Oh, but okay. I think we've all had one at one stage. Um, it was formerly a hard hit and 26er. Now turned 29er. It's looking good. Um, so Intend have updated their Hover Shock. Hover? Are we calling it yeah, the yeah, Hover it is. Shock? Yeah, it is Hover Shock. Um, so your bike will just turn into a Hover bike. Oh, when of it's on. Of course, yeah. right. So the hover is now a hover opt, which is basically optimized, it's short for. Oh. Um, so it is the same sort of shock. Um, it's nothing radical here, uh, but they have changed it, updated to a one piece black anodized external shaft. So it's looking pretty slick. Um, they've got new seals and some new seal grooves and some new bearing shafts as well to improve. Um, the design on a pretty good shock already, which could be uh, fine tuned, um, and it had sort of separate air negative and yeah, air chambers that you can. It feels tune like into once your... set up, it could be really incredible. Mm. I feel like it, there's a bit. Of, it's not as simple as just pumping it up. I feel like it's probably a bit of faff, it's but like not. all good things, it's worth yeah. the time and the investment. <laughs> Uh, and like all good things, it comes with a big price tag, though. It's 1,079 euros, including that. Shivers. Mm. Must be good. What time is it? It's quiz time! Yay! <laughs> I love a quiz. What's on the quiz? Oh, we didn't even tee that up. Well done, you. Thanks. Uh, so, we asked last week, we asked uh, Aaron Gwynn has been sponsored by and bought a third of a company, which is quite exciting and Very. unusual. Uh, what company was it? It was Crestline Bicycles. Um, so, we've got quite a few actually. I think that's a um, lot. Responses. That's good. That's a well lot. done. I'm really impressed. Yeah. Um, maybe you're well into your racing news and you knew who the sponsor was, but well done, you guys. Um, so here's your new question. Uh, Shram has opted for mineral oil in the new Maven brakes instead of the usual DOT, but what does DOT stand for? What is that DOT? I believe someone mentioned it, so if you're paying attention, you'll know the answer to this. Okay, I found What have we got for top mod? A top mod today, and uh, this guy, so Gene from Fort Worth in Texas, found a 1994 Trek 830. Uh, so this little red number here, and it was a bit beaten up. Um, he's given it, he was given it by his local bike store owner and just said, do something with it. So nice. what he has done is he's stripped the paint off it, he's sanded it all down, um, giving it a nice raw finish, and he's completely built it up. Look, new stickers oh, on gee. there. Uh, look, they almost look original, those stickers, so he's done well to get the right decals. Um, and then he's sort of done a bit of a complete oh, very retro nice. build here. And what I really like is the raw really sort of like lifts out that little seat cut uh, yeah. collar, which is just nicely cut there, and some old carbon seat posts there and some rock shocks um pogo sticks on the front there i think those could be they could be indies or they could be uh quad 20, 21 hours mm. yeah i'll agree with you okay and yeah can't no, leave a break still though so i don't <coughs> know if you're uh, maybe gravel riding on this but i hope you're not you could do mountain too biking on that wild on it that'd be great as long as it's dry <laughs> and not too steep it'd be a hoot amazing um yes amazing uh, thank you. If you have a top mod of your own or a rewind or a bike cave that you want us to snoop in, then do use that upload a link down in the description below. Comments! Comments indeed from you lovely people. Last week we were talking about our inserts and whether they're a bad thing or a good thing and why the pros are stay staying away from them. Uh, Tim, some of them. Some, some of them really like right. them. Yeah, so, you're yeah. absolutely right. I apologise. Um, our regular, Tim Sadler. Hello, Tim. Um, always appreciate your comments. I've run them in the past, but moving back to heavier rear tyre um, instead has meant that I haven't really needed them. Yeah, fair enough. If you're running DH casing and you're yeah. all right with that, then yeah. 
Maybe you don't. Yeah, uh, Mojo MTB 101, good name. Um, he's used the uh, Nuke Proof ARD. Well, I feel like that'll be the ARD RIP, unfortunately, well, soon. But um, yeah, he's used it on his trail, full suspension, his XT, uh, look, XT, his XC hardtail. Um, because yeah, he, he likes the feeling of a supple, supple lighter casing mm. of a tyre and low pressures, but he also, uh, yeah, likes the extra protection. So another another person who likes them. So yeah, that's actually, good. there was a lot of people who liked them, and I thought our viewers were going to hate them. I thought this was one of those tech things yeah. you wouldn't get on no, with. No, I'm I'm a big fan. I was yeah riding an overly rocky descent on an underbiked bike, and I wish I'd yeah I wish I'd oh, put them the in. Oh, inserts in the gravel bike. Absolutely needed. I always run into right, in the Right, there you bike. go, okay. Uh, feedback, uh, Zaloop says, Procore anytime. It even makes tyre sealing easier. Actively pushing tyre bead from the inside and it is the only system I can justify the cost of. Well, if it works for you, it works yeah, for you. Yeah, I mean, uh, initial Procore was with narrower, older school rims, I would say, challenging. And I think that's maybe where it put off a lot of people because it was quite an engaging thing. And effectively, you've got like a a, a, a tyre carcass without any tread that sits inside, so you've got mm. two lots of beads pushing against, but it is, it's a real uh, sort of like beadlock system. Mm. Once it's on, the tyre's not going anywhere. Interesting to see someone say it actually helps them, whereas yeah. I thought a lot of people would be worried about um, yeah. it being difficult. Uh, Mark Marino, uh, Weekend Warrior, it took some pains to switch to tubeless, finally learned that rim tyre compatibility was really important, so now I ride tubeless. Uh, to go to inserts, that's a whole nother level up in headache. It's not. They're not well, that much of a headache. Yeah, I mean, They're pretty simple. You've that, worked out the compatibility on your rim tyres now. It may be another compatibility yeah, like, issue, but once you get it... But there isn't. That Vittoria one, it is. You just yeah, right. fit it and forget it. They are, they're brill. Uh, Uted, final comment here, says, I pinch flatted two new rear tyres on their first ride. Now I use inserts on both rear wheels on both my bikes and they are fine. Um, yeah, I mean, the security is definitely what most people I, run them for, isn't it? Yeah, I think it goes without saying that some of the systems out there are expensive, full mm -hmm. stop. Um, but pricing on quite a lot of them is less than a new tyre, like at half the price of a new tyre. And you, like, with the Vittorio ones I've got, we've got more experience in the workshop of using those. They do last a while. Like you'll yeah. wear out a tyre before you wear the system out. And it's that thing of like, you know, new tyres are, I think I saw pricing on some tyres, it's like 90 quid for a rear tyre. And, and like, oh my God. that upsets me when I had to replace a tyre because it's so badly split or yeah. punctured before the treads even run out. Exactly. So that, and that's, so that's another, devastating. Another vote for inserts. What are we um, looking forward to next week? So on Saturday, I believe you are bleeding any SRAM break. Mostly, I think. Because are you including these? No, we're not. <laughs> we're we're bleeding most of the SRAM brakes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I feel like I'm also doing a video on Shimano ones, but maybe that's for another time. It so is exciting. for another time, yes. Yeah. Sorry to spoil that for um, you guys, but, but it's just tram brakes this Saturday. And then on Sunday, we are fixing creaky bikes. Is that you again? That's, that is this is also me. This is a full me. Owen weekend. There what you go. are we going to do? <laughs> lucky, lucky people. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. Um, anyway, thanks for watching and do join the debate down below. Do you think brakes need more power or are these just reserved for the pros? Uh, let us know what you think and we'll see you again next week.